Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher. We're coming to you from South Africa. Right now we're in the famous restaurant Carnivores. Stick around, we're gonna see what God is saying to you in your dreams. I have two viewer dreams I want to share with you. They're both from the same viewer, and she had the dreams one night after the other. In the first dream, in her sleep, in her dream, she has a dream. And in the dream, within a dream, she's surrounded by lots of people, but she's not interacting with them. Then in the dream, she wakes up, and she's surrounded by people. Then she wakes up in real life. Now, obviously, there's no one in her room with her. And she was really disturbed by this. A dream within a dream represents revelation because you wake up. God's speaking to your spirit even in your dream, and you wake up. God is showing her that even though she's around people, she's not interacting with them because she's called to be separate. We're called to be different. And what she's going to find is she's growing spiritually. And as she does so, some of her old friends and people she used to hang with aren't going to be as comfortable around her. She can still be friends with them, but she's going to want to start finding friends that are kind of more on her spiritual level, just for someone to talk to and to understand. Then she has a second dream she calls a Cracker Barrel Church dream. She's in a building. It, it's a restaurant. She says it looks like a Cracker Barrel. It's real dark. It has a lot of brick and cement and items from the past. She says there's many rooms there. There's a cafe, there's some, um, a big dining area, but there's also some little private rooms. And these rooms, she says she can tell her use for family gatherings and birthday parties. She knows she's there for church. She thinks it's like a Sunday morning and there's praise and worship going on, but there's no leader, there's no band leader, there's no instruments, and yet the people in the congregation are sitting down facing forward as if they were going to have church. And she's standing in the back kind of watching this. Everyone's singing and praising the Lord. It's heavenly, she says. Then people, the praise and worship is over, so people start getting up and going to different little rooms. She, however, stays in the main part of the restaurant. She says she's in the main dining area, and the people who stay in the main area with her split up into little small groups, and they sit down for like Bible study, and she sees one chair that's old and the paint is chipping. Well, we know that a restaurant is where people go to get food. A church is where you go to get spiritual food. This is a church that has dark and um, traditional. It's past focused, not forward focused. And there's no authority. The chair is authority. It's old. God is telling you something about your church. Hello from Nashville Airport, right here at the International Airport. We are so excited to get our trip underway to our missions trip to Africa and Swaziland. Please be in prayer for us. The guys are excited. I mean, it is so awesome. We're just glowing with excitement and passion for what God's going to do. So I'll see you then. We'll talk some more. Okay? God bless. Hello. Hi, everybody. mission fields that you could ever be in, New York City, <laughs> right here, Rockefeller uh, Plaza, it's beautiful, so we're going to send our troops out to just go witness to everybody, get them saved all in this area, let's go guys, let's go. <laughs> Tonight here in New York City, 
um, it is kind of hard to, to collect your thoughts right now and think about this. But here we are at the Infinity Fountain. Absolutely beautiful. Breathtaking. Take, you, can't, you can't help but take your heart and your mind back to not so many years ago, 9-11. This right here changed the face and the heart of America forever. Perhaps the world. How they've erected right here at Grand Zero. This beautiful building. Lest we forget. Pray for America. Pray for our nation. Because we never want to see this happen again. Never ever. Right here we're standing with the names of so many that have fallen here at the World Trade Centers where they were standing. We ask for prayer. We ask that we join our hearts and that this country would unify again. The division is hurting us. We pray that God will just do a mighty miracle in our nation, the United States of America. But see, the Big Apple is known around the world. And right here is what changed everything. Pray that a revival and awakening would sweep America like never before. We're standing at the bring even tonight, tomorrow morning, flying overseas to another mission field. But I tell you the truth, right here is a great mission field. We love you. God bless you. Pray for us. I think every one of us remember where we were the day that the planes hit the towers. And remember, we thought it was an accident, and then we found out it was an evil act of cowardice to God. Anyone else? It's hard to come up with words. Yeah, but I remember exactly what I was doing. I was at home on vacation. It was just a beautiful, beautiful, bright, sunny day. And my wife came in and said, uh, you better turn the TV on. I just remember so clearly, like it was just like yesterday. to the border. We've just come through one border and we're getting ready to go to the next. We're coming. There's going to be three more today, and we're going to bless them with some Vaseline and some toothbrushes and lots of little gifts. Come and see what we're doing. Hello. Hello.
beautiful, cool water out of that well. What a blessing that is. Wow. like a cooking area. This is their kitchen. It's open air as you can see, but I see some pots back here. And uh, Yeah, this is where they're going to be probably cooking the kids lunch later. You see all the trash. They don't have trash pickup like we have. I'm inside the room of one of the orphans. It's, you can see how big it is. It's about, if two people here, we could touch hands and touch the sides. It's just no dressers, no place to put anything, and probably several children sleep in here. Cardboard over the windows, mosquito netting, a dresser, and mud walls. This room doesn't have a bed. It only has, I hear a kitty, a kitty. There's the dresser, my walls, laying on the floor. Oh, so I can feel God's presence right now. So amazing. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you stand back there? In I can't hear you back there, brother. Nice to see you. Can you can you read English? Yes, I know. You don't know Jesus? Would you like to know? Would you like to read his word? I know to the You read, you read it all the way, many times, and then you'll know Jesus. And then your life will be better. Amen. My family is God bless you. I want to work. God bless you. Watching Dreamcatcher, and we are in Johannesburg, South Africa. What a beautiful place! God is so creative, and when He made South Africa, He knew what He was doing. I'm here with Dana, and she, we are on a mission trip here in South Africa. Dana, before we get to your dream, what has been your, your most important, most powerful, whatever tear jerking moment? What touched you the most so far on our trip? Actually, there were two. Uh, one was uh, at the first orphanage, I think I went in with the uncertainty of what to expect. Um, it, it was just a little overwhelming with the children. Um, but just going and not knowing what to expect with the kids and, and just how grateful and thankful they were for even the smallest gifts. Right. I think that was one. And then uh, the uh, time at our pastor's home. Oh, yes, yes. Um, just going in and knowing the spirit and how, even that home today, how you still felt the, yes. the spiritualness there. Yes, his childhood home. 
Hey, yeah. this, the house? this is the house. This is the house. Here was the front entrance. It had two. They've built a little different now. Front entrance. It had a big porch area in the front here. And uh, yeah, this house had big shutters on the side. This was the boys' room. This was known. Sit here many, many days as a little boy. Just hang out here and do your homework or whatever. Or climb one of these trees and do your homework. Wow. Look at here. I knew there was a washing line out here somehow. And from that one. There it is. <laughs> See, for me, it's important because I used to help hang a little washing up here. And then somewhere in the middle, Mom would take a big old pole and push it up so the washing can hang. And dry. We can go in the house. That was the only bathroom that yeah, I know of. It's still a bathroom. This is the dining room, right? That used to be the kitchen. That used to be the kitchen. Oh, that, that used to be the, the kitchen. kitchen. Okay, and this was the bedroom. That was another bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Bedroom, kitchen, dining room on the left back here, leading into the sitting room. My name is Tiffany and um, I just wanted to uh, say a little something about the Dream Catcher Catch Your Dream Journal. Now before this book, I did used to dream, but it was probably maybe like one dream a week, like one good dream a week that had like substance in it. Well after I got this book, I was dreaming every single night. This book filled up with my dreams within three months and I was in need of another book and so I said to Miss Robin I said it's like your books are like a dream catalyst that enables you to just dream more and hear more from the Lord. Now, I needed another book so I got two so that I can be prepared I should probably get three but it's a great book and you should make sure that you get one. We're walking back, we're walking out of Swaziland into South Africa again, walking the border. We're in no man's land. I'm the only one in South Africa. Everyone else is in Swaziland still. I hope I don't leave them. I hope they make it through, otherwise we're in trouble. Well, you had shared a dream with me, I think on the plane, and I, I gave you some, some information on it, but then last night as I slept, I woke up and I thought, oh, there's a deeper meaning to that. So would you share the dream real loud so they can hear us? We're, we're outside and there's a lot going on. And then I'll, I'll tell you what I... It, it was a dream and it... And it it was one of those that, you know, how you have dreams sometimes that it's like, I want to wake up, I want to get out right. of this dream because it was something that wasn't pleasant. I, I, I was actually, I don't even know where I was at. I just remember walking down this road and, and I saw this vehicle and it, and it actually had backed over this child. And then it was like, as soon as it did that, and, and it was like I couldn't get there to help. I couldn't get there fast enough to do anything about it. I was almost speechless because I couldn't say anything and, and warn the child. And it was just like, I kept hitting repeat. And right. that, that dream just kept going in circles. And I'm thinking, please let me wake up from this. Yeah. Please let me wake up. And so it was one of those that you just didn't want to go back. You didn't want to think about it again. Right. Sometimes when we have a dream, if the Lord is showing us something that's going to happen. Sometimes when we have a dream, He's warning us, like with Nineveh, He told Jonah, go to Nineveh. And if you don't, this is what's going to happen. That's what your dream was about. A car, many of you know who watched the program, a vehicle is a ministry or a move of God. Well, God doesn't move backwards, and this car was backing up and hitting this child over and over again. What the Lord was saying to you, though, was He has the call, a move in your life, and He wants you to go forward. 
when we don't answer the call of God in our life, we're going backwards. And he was saying, if you don't get in this car and do what he's telling you to do, Jonah, if you don't go to Nineveh, I'm going to destroy Nineveh. What he was saying to Dana was, if you don't answer this call in your life, so many children are going to be impacted. And the fact that it went over and over and over, he was showing you that the repercussions would go on and on and on. We come as missionaries and we, we give out food and we give out clothing and little trinkets and we pray with these children and we feel like we touch this one child, but we don't realize the impact that this is going to have generation after generation and our touch and our blessing from the Lord can change lives forever generation after generation and and if we don't do it then all those blessings that would have happened is what you were seeing over and over God is so good and he's got a call on your life whatever it is answer that call My name is Amber and uh, Miss Robin just did dream interpretation for me and a lot of other people and I really appreciated her input and insight on the dreams that I had. It helped me to really understand my dreams even deeper than I already understood them and I it all just kind of sat well with me. We're standing in the rain waiting to cry to go onto a plane. Where are we going, team? Cape Town! Cape Town! Town. <laughs> in the rain! <laughs> we are in Cape Town, the second of one of the two most beautiful cities in the whole world, according to Manuel. And we are getting ready to go see if we are number one or number two. <laughs> oh, this has been a wonderful trip so far, and we're having a great time. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, nice summer-like day. Every, every, the world is wonderful. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. It's been awesome. <laughs> 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 A life changing experience. Amen. 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 It's been an amazing trip. <laughs> beautiful day, beautiful weather every day. Now we're going to see the ocean. Yes, God's beautiful ocean. We're in Hotbai. Yay! Jesus, Hagioli. Jesus loves you. We're in Port Town. Port Bay. Bay. Port Bay. In uh, South Africa. Port Bay. How cool. And where are we standing, Dana? We're standing in the Atlantic Ocean. And it's cold. It is. Yeah. I had to sit back a minute, take a deep The dream that you heard earlier, I got feedback from the dreamer and she said she found out that several people in the church were starting to leave because of some of the things that was being taught from the pulpit was not really biblically sound. So the Lord was really talking to her about that. This same dreamer sent me another dream we call difficult stairs. She's standing in front of a converse, uh, congregation and she's trying to preach, but the more she talks, the less people are there. Some people are having many conversations and they're distracted. Even her pastor is distracted. So she keeps speaking, but they're not listening. She doesn't remember anything that she says other than that the people, the group keeps getting smaller and smaller. Then the pastor gets very antsy as well, almost like he's panicking. She says the room finally feels like it's the size of a bathroom and hardly anyone's left. Then the dream changes and they're at church, but she's going down hallways with other people and then they're going up straight, narrow staircases. And the only people with her are close family members and a few people that used to go to this church. God is giving her a platform to preach at, but he's clearly telling her it's not at this church. This could be a teacher, she may be a leader of a women's group, not necessarily a pastor. but. 
obviously this church is not the platform that he has for her. But it's okay. Remember, the Lord said a prophet's not known in his own home. The pastor was afraid of what she may say because even pastors sometimes are afraid to hear the hard truth. Most of Jesus' followers deserted him too, if you remember. So the Lord is calling you, but you put this dream with the dreams from earlier in the program. God is moving you from this church. Now, I believe in this particular case, maybe it's the season for your pastor is up. It may just be the season for you is up as well. Sometimes when the Lord wants to move us, he has to make us unhappy, so we will go and seek something else. However, from what you've told me with people leaving, I believe this pastor may need prayer, but God is calling you, so don't get discouraged. Don't let the, the dream of the people leaving bother you because these people know you just like they knew Jesus, and it's, oh, he's the carpenter's son. God will show you where you need to go. He's made you a platform. You listen to His voice, not the voice of others. What's up, Ms. Dana? Oh, he's praying. Oh, he's beautiful. Cheetah. My granddaughter was a cheetah girl when she was little. <laughs> Look, your headband matches. Yeah. But it's, I didn't hurt. No animals were hurt in the making of the headband. <laughs> Pastor, oh, you beautiful, you're beautiful. Thank you. Oh, oh he's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a big one. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, how amazing. Oh, oh, we got. Oh, oh, he's a big boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, oh, how special. Oh, I don't want to roll at you now. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> how sweet. How sweet is this? Oh. 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 Yeah. Don't miss Dreamcatcher next time. Our trip to Africa continues. We are going to visit the Door of Hope. It's where women who just can't take care of their babies any longer can leave them with no questions asked, and people come and take them and adopt them out. You're going to be able to see the beautiful Cape Town from a top table mountain. And my guest, Daniel, he has a dream that he had since childhood, and he shares it for the very first time with you. Remember, catch your dreams. <laughs>